So a recent survey found that one out of every one garages has a messy wall in it somewhere. <laughs> I've got a messy wall right here and I'm sure you probably do as well. And I don't have a great storage system right now. I just kind of threw those two by fours up there. So today I'm going to use some commercial slat wall and really reorganize this entire space and give you some good ideas of how you can do it in your own garage. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That. Let's get going. All right. First thing we'll do is get the CNC out of here. Having it on a mobile stand is definitely nice. Now we can take off the rest of all this stuff and get our clean wall. So in case you're wondering, I do not discriminate against screws. I have got Torx, Square Drive, and Phillips all within this little area. So let me know down in the comments which drive type you like best in your screws. And Canadians, I know it's the Robertson. So let me show you what I'm gonna be using on the wall. These are the Husky wall panels. I did get these from Home Depot as part of their prospective tool review program. And if you've not seen these before, they have T-shaped slats that the little fittings will go right into that for the holders and they have all different types of holders. But the nice thing is, is they are modular and so they fit together. You can just snap them right together and you can use as many as you need for your space. So I'll start off by marking the lines where the studs are so that we can locate those for install. Now, I've already got the lines for the screws, so I can just use my six foot level here and mark where the studs are all the way down. But if you don't have screws already in your wall, then you just grab a stud finder or you can use my preferred method, which is using a large rare earth magnet. And that little piece of tape there is just to protect the wall. And wherever you go along the wall and there's a screw, it's going to hold onto the wall. And if you take one at the top and one at the bottom, then you have a nice line of exactly where your studs are because they're also not always going to be level. Now it's time for layout and the most important thing to figure out is where you're going to start it as far as the ceiling height. There is a top rail and a bottom rail which are basically just for trim and together these are going to add three inches to the total height and then each of these inner pieces is six inches. So you can use that to figure out how much room you want to take on the wall. So for me I'm going to go with nine panels high which would give me 57 inches and that will take me right above the outlets here on the wall but it will give me enough height to be able to put the yard tools and I can hang them without them running into the CNC and causing issues. And if you're working around these, make sure you don't knock yourself out and fall off a ladder. That'd be a bad day. All right, so now I can come up and attach the top rail. I'll line it up with the studs and then drive that right into a stud location in the little V-groove, one on each end of the top rail, and then I can connect the next one. I'm just gonna line this up here. I'm just gonna eyeball that. And this is just PVC, so the screws go into it really nicely. And you do want to make sure that the screws go all the way into the PVC because as the next panel clicks in, you don't want it to be hitting the screw heads. So the next thing I'm going to do is connect the other top rail. And here's a good view of that little V groove that you can drive the screws into. Uh, but also on the end, there is a little hole and there's a hole on each side and there's these little pins that you can put in. So I'm going to drive this pin into both sides and down to the little retention clip and then I can insert that onto the other piece and that's going to keep everything aligned and I'll do that on all the panels as I move down the wall. There we go. Sometimes this isn't going to be perfect and you can just drill it out because it's vinyl it drills out really easily if you need to adjust it up or down just a hair. That did not feel like I actually hit a stud. An ice pick is my favorite way to confirm there's a stud there. There's definitely one right here. There we go. So after you're done installing that top rail, the rest of it goes really easily. Now you can just grab that next panel, lock it into place onto the top rail, align it on the right side, and then drive the screws into the stud locations at those same points that you did on the top rail. Then you can just rinse and repeat and work your way down the wall. I 
I got the main section done, but I still have two panels left. So what I'm gonna do is actually fill in that little spot up here. And you can cut this, this is just vinyl, so you can cut this with regular power tools or even a handsaw. I'm gonna cut this down and turn these two panels into four smaller panels that will fit up there. It'll be good for some long-term storage right above the cabinet. So I've got it ended right above my electrical outlets, which is great. And if I ever wanted to add on more later, this little bottom piece comes right off and you could add more in, I could make cutouts. But now I need to go in and start working with the hooks and I'm gonna make some custom ones because not everything that I have is gonna fit on the standard hooks. So in case you can't tell, I love organization. I've done a lot of different organization projects throughout the entire workshop, which is my garage. And today's video is sponsored by Fix This Build That. We have a lot of different plans that you can use to build your own workshop out, get plenty of great storage, whether you're doing shop cabinets, I've got a whole modular system along with a miter saw station, or you wanna do a flip top tool cart, maybe a cordless drill charging station, Station, somewhere to hold your wood and really make it a space that you're going to enjoy going out to and doing your woodworking and that's really the whole goal of the channel is to help you get better and to help you enjoy your time when you're out in your shop. I'll have a link below in the description where you can check those plans out or you can go to fixthisbuildthat.com forward slash get plans to see everything that we have to offer. I also want to give a huge thank you to all those folks that are joining the Builders Club. They actually get free plans every month as part of one of those tiers. If you want to check that out as well, we would love to have you as part of the team. All right, let's get back to the video. The nice thing about the commercial slat wall systems is they do come with hooks. So we have little double hooks. We've got longer double hooks. We've got wider double hooks. We've got really wide hooks. You've also got a smaller complement of little J hooks and L hooks. And there's a lot more where that came from. So I have quite a variety here. I'm gonna go ahead and put things up on the wall. But if the hangers available don't match what you want, you can build some. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do that, a DIY approach and a little more advanced approach. So let me get to hanging all these things that I have right now and we'll see what custom ones we need to make. I'll start by hanging up the longer and larger items first and then I can fill in the small ones around it. So I've got everything up here on the wall that I had before, plus a little extra, and now I have room for other things. Like I wanna put my blower up there, I have a little dust collection floor sweeper, and then I wanna have some of my most used lubricants up there. I use these guys all the time. But there aren't great hooks for these. So I'm gonna show you how to make some custom holders to fit these types of items and more. So let's start off with the easy ones. I'm gonna make a holder for these two cans of WD-40, and this could obviously work for a spray paint or a carb cleaner or whatever else you want that is round, screwdrivers even. And I'm gonna have a back plate and then have a piece of plywood on top as well as one on bottom. And on the top side, I'm just gonna have some holes here for cutouts for the cans. So it could be as easy as just putting these on here and tracing around with a pencil and then cutting them out with a jigsaw or an appropriate sized hole saw. That would be nice and easy. Now. I have a CNC, which is gonna be right in front of that wall. So I'm gonna take this time to use the CNC and get a little design practice in. Anytime I can get some design practice using my CNC and even my 3D printer, then I'm gonna do that because I wanna use those more. So with just a few quick measurements of the can, I can use that and put it into the easel software for my X-Carve, and I can just draw this up and combine shapes and then get exactly what I need for the cutout. And it's a super simple design and it can cut in just a few minutes. I'll have a link below to Easel, the inventable software that I'm using, as well as the X-Carve, which is their CNC machine that I have. And after just a few minutes of carving, I have my pieces. I did go ahead and round over the edges so they're nice and smooth. I'm just gonna put these together with the back piece. I'm gonna put a little glue on here and then uh, a few me nails. And now I've got a little holder for my most used cans. So I can put these in here and we'll cut out for the straws. And you don't have to use a CNC, obviously. You could use a hole saw and just do it. I'm gonna show you how to make some little DIY hooks out of screws and washers that'll mount on the slat wall. 
So this hanger is very simple. I'll have a close up of it here, but it's just a screw, three washers, and a little piece of tubing. So first of all, a big shout out to my buddy Johnny from Crafted Workshop. He helped me figure this out uh, as we were trying to do it all kinds of different ways. This one worked out really well. And you can see that it's just gonna come in here and fit in nicely. So, so basically it's gonna create a little pocket that's the size of this little lip in between the back of whatever you're trying to hang and this back washer. But it's just a one inch number eight screw and then two quarter inch washers, then a number eight washer behind that just to keep the tubing from going through the washers to keep the washers in place. So this is quarter inch tubing. If you used 5 16th tubing, you probably wouldn't need that number eight washer. So I'm just gonna mount two of these on the back and I did mark the holes on the back so that they will be the same height from the top so that it won't be uneven side to side. So after putting in the screws, this is ready to hang on the wall. So I also went ahead and used the CNC doing the same idea to make the holder for that dust hose and put the DIY hangers on the back as well. Let's go see how everything fits. All right, we'll stick this straight on here. Yeah, let's go down here at the bottom. And you can adjust it just a little bit if you needed to in the back with your drill. If it's a little loose, you can tighten up the screw a bit. There you go. And put in the cans. It works pretty well. Now, I don't know what the weight capacity is. This is probably better for just smaller items, uh, but you could beef it up and use thicker material if you wanted to. But it's perfect for things like that and the dust collection hose. Yeah, that'll work. Now my blower won't really fit any of those different mounting methods that I have, but it has like a hook here on the back that you can put it on the wall. So I'll show you a quick tip on how to do that, which is a nice little DIY method for anything that you can hang. And I'm just gonna use quarter inch plywood, cut it down and then use washers to space it off of the wall the same amount that this is. And I'll just be able to hook it straight in and lock it in place. So just cut down that piece. Then I'm gonna put it underneath to see how far down these little tabs go. I could just rip that down on the table saw and have my little hook. Now I can just take this little piece, I can just get a little backer that's cut to the same size, line this up and drill some holes, then put in the right amount of spacers to fit the bracket on the back of the blower. It looks like two quarter inch nuts will actually work out just the right amount. Right now we'll just see if this fits. Ooh. And it does, perfect. So now I can uh, put the standoffs on here and put it on the wall. I did make this a bit longer and the reason I did that is so that this whole base down here could engage with it. So as it rests up against the wall, it's gonna rest on the wood instead of wanting to overextend and put torque on the top of that bracket. <laughs> All right, that fits awesome. If you wanna check out some more organization videos for your garage and shop, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there. You can go check them out. And I wanna give a big thank you to all those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.